Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Anish Learns to Code. My name is Anish, and today we will discuss my experience of working as an intern at Zomato, receiving the full-time placement offer, receiving a PPO, as well as my interview experience and how exactly I got placed at Zomato. So Zomato arrived on campus uh, in DTU. I'm I was studying in DTU Delhi Technological University. It's the New Delhi, India, and uh, Zomato is an Indian startup which. If you are, if you live in India, most probably know what Zomato is. So they are now, they have even crossed Indian borders. They are there in Turkey. They are there in uh, Arab countries, UAE, Dubai, etc. And so they deliver food. So it's kind of like the Uber Eats of India. So Zomato came to our college for on-campus placements. And as everyone else, I also applied. Uh, they had a Google form. And the questions they asked in the Google form are very basic. So full name, first name, last name, your CZP in college a cumulative grade point that you achieved in school. And a very different question that Zomato asked that no other company actually asked was whether you had ever taught to other people. So whether you were ever a tutor to other students. So this was very, uh, I remember this question because this was so different. I had never seen this in any other Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley or any other company that came on campus. So I had previously been a teaching assistant at Coding Ninjas and I've also taught for more than one year, uh, many different subjects to students at what after college. So I did write this down in my Google form and Zomato was the first company to actually invite me to an interview. I was, a, no other company previously uh, had invited me to an interview. So I was very excited because it's my first on-campus company that actually asked me, okay, please come for an interview. Uh, no other company gave me that much an, of an honor as well. So yeah, and I think that writing, filling when I was filling out this Google form, writing this section that I have taught for four months at Coding Ninjas and more than one year at what after college, maybe differentiated my application from other students and maybe that is why I was invited for an interview which is just what I guess I can never know I can never be sure so yeah uh, I had two rounds of interviews almost everyone that interviewed for Zomato and got selected had two rounds of interview there were very 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 few exceptions uh, which had three rounds of uh, interviews and only one student that I know of that got selected after the very first round so if you're that exceptional good for you so in the first round of interview, I did submit my transcripts. When the interview sat in front of me, I gave him all my university transcripts. I gave him my resume, my updated resume, because obviously in my university database, the resume was not updated, despite me nagging them continuously. Yeah. So the interview did take about one, two minutes going through my resume. And he did not ask me many questions. So the first question that he asked me after the pleasantries were done, first name, last name, what what do you do? Where are you from? Once the pleasantries were done, he asked me whether I had done any projects that I was proud of, any good projects that I would like to showcase to him. So in this opportunity, I opened my, I shared my screen. I opened my GitHub profile, Anish Learns to Code, and I just showed him a few projects from there. So the projects that I showed my interviewer, uh, I have a project for competitive programming, where I have different repositories for hacker and lead code, where I solve problems. I'm not very much into competitive programming, but I do like solving problems. I really enjoy it. I, I just don't have the time to do it as much as I would like to. So I showed him like here are a few repositories where I like solving problems. I also showed him another project that I, I had created for a subject in university, Theory of Automata. So I had created a small simulator project, uh, a red light simulator, for which I had created for Theory of Automata. I showed him my simulator, which I had created on Angular. And that is something that he was very much impressed by. So he really liked that. Uh, and he even asked me where, how did I deploy that project? And what is the deployment pipeline that I used, I had used to deploy the project. So the project was created in Angular. It was not a very large project. And the deployment pipeline was also very simple, very basic. I was just using Firebase uh, to deploy my project. Just convert my project to a distribution, upload the distribution, like with this HTML, CSS, JavaScript file, to the Firebase um, link and your project became becomes available. So it's like your project name dot Firebase dot IO and anyone in the world can access that project. So it was a very fairly simple uploading pipeline, but he was still happy because I had created something of my own. I had developed it on my own and I was deploying it, publishing it. And I had a pipeline to do that. I had made a single command line, uh, which if you run that command line, it will automatically build, compile and deploy. So I think that he was happy to see that. And after this, 
he did not ask me any other questions. So I, I was just showing him my project, my project. I actually became very nervous because I thought that this is a very bad sign that two people are talking to each other, only one person is saying, and the other person is saying absolutely nothing. So I, many times I even stopped myself and I asked him, don't you have any question for me? Would you not like to ask me something? Because I thought that the interview is going so badly. The other person is absolutely disinterested. He's like, just, yeah, fine, fine. What, show me whatever you want in five minutes, I'm going to end this. So towards the end, I kept on asking him, Do you, don't you have any question? Don't you want to ask me anything? And he just thought for like 10 seconds and said, no, I have no question. Thank you very much. So I thought that uh, I blew the interview because if the other person did not talk to me very much, did not talk to me almost at all, did not hardly ask me two questions during the whole interview, I did not think that my interview went very well. So I was not very hopeful, but I did get invited for the second round of the interview. So I was like, okay, wow. Thank you very much. In the second round of interview, the interview is taken by the CTO of the company. So Zomato CTO actually took my second interview and the CTO told me that the previous person who took your interview is like the best programmer, one of the top programmers that Zomato has. And he specifically like individually sent me your resume to me that have a look at this guy's resume. So I was like, okay, wow, <laughs> I was not expecting that. So, and he said, so yeah, like you, you made a very big impression on him. I said, seriously, he did not ask me anything. I, okay, fine. So this was an interview where questions were asked finally. Yeah. So there were several, several, several questions asked in this interview for many different domains. So the first question that was asked was sort of not, not a question that he wanted to ask, but I dug a hole for myself. So I was throwing him some projects once again on my GitHub profile and one project that I had done was a small video game that I had built on Python, which was called Alien Defense, Alien Protection. I don't even remember the name right now, but that's a very simple game. You use your arrow keys and you can fire bullets from your uh, alien spaceship. So in this project, I had made a very big mistake. The, there were like some very conceptual object oriented programming mistakes that I had made during this project. And I told him that this project is very famous. It has like 10, 12 stars on my GitHub profile. And this is a project I'm absolutely not proud of. Whereas projects that I'm proud of that are very well written from a programmatic point of view, they have zero stars. Like nobody's talking or nobody's looking at them. So I said, okay, um, so why do you think that there is this, what are the mistakes that you're saying that this project is not good? Why is this project not good? So then I explained to him that uh, there are some object oriented programming principles that I have broken. Like for example, this object is referencing another object and the reference object contains the reference of the parent and is modifying the parent. Whereas the parent is not modifying itself. So this is a very uh, bad syntax. So uh, these are the few things that I pointed out to him. And then we got into a serious deep discussion on object oriented programming. We discussed like polymorphism, abstraction and encapsulation, every single thing in detail. Then we even discussed, okay, why should this spaceship object that is there, why should it be able to access its own properties? Why should this not be able to access its own properties? Why are the child currently accessing the parent's properties? When should the child be allowed to access the properties of the parent, not be allowed to access the properties of the parent. So there were deep philosophical discussions with probably no one single correct answer. Then he asked me, uh, what is the difference between, um, okay, so the interview did take place like in eight months ago, maybe nine months ago. I don't, ah, I need to recall this. Yep, he asked me, uh, what is the difference between uh, containing, Abstract, what is the difference between extend, extending objects? Like where if you're just A extends V, B extends C, and you're just, um, and what is the difference between composition? So composition versus inheritance. That was a question, a very famous object-oriented programming question. So I told him like some advantages of, uh, what are the advantages that uh, composition offers? What are the advantages that inheritance offers? And the disadvantages of both as well. And he was, I think, uh, happy with my answer that I was able to answer this question well. Then he asked me that, have you ever went on amazon.com? I said, yes, I have had a look at Amazon. So in Amazon, there are drop down menus. For example, there's a section for healthcare. Inside healthcare, you can have uh, men's grooming. Inside men's grooming, you can have shaving it, for example. So you can have drop down inside drop down inside, inside a drop down. You can have these drop down menus on your front end UI interface. This front end UI interface, how would you implement this? How would you store the structure in a database in SQL? So for this, I offered him the, an example of a table. Let's say that we have a table where we have item, like what is the item on your dropdown? 
and for every item you have an item id so every item has a unique item id and every item also has a parent where the parent can is is also another item so your for example your item can be healthcare with some item id 0 inside there can be certain of several other items um, men's healthcare women's healthcare so children healthcare i'm i'm making random examples right now and every other healthcare item can have uh, let's say some item id 1 2 3 4 and all of these items can have a parent which is the main healthcare so when you run on the sql table you can see okay these all items they all belong to their parent is this healthcare item so when you click on healthcare this drop down should contain these children and for every child which is also a parent of some other children should have a further arrow should have a further drop down menu and those further drop down items should be items whose parent is this child item so now you can have one table you don't need to have separate tables you can just have one table where every item can have some other parent and that parent in itself can belong to some other drop down or some other parent so this is how you can have a nested parent type hierarchy in an sql table i think you are satisfied by my answer all right moving on towards the end he asked me a question on network interfaces and network interfaces are not my strong suit so he asked me whether i knew what this network interface thing means so um he asked me something about network adapters and i told i honestly answered him what this network adapter thing that you're saying i have no idea what it means i honestly told him i don't i have no idea what this means but i will take a guess because it was an entire name that he said i said based on this name based on like my understanding of computers i was just venture a guess so i think the word i think the network word that he said was maybe a network buffer or maybe a network adapter buffer i have i forgot and it happened like 8 months ago so on the spot i just say that I, i just said that this there's this buffer inside devices and as you're receiving packets as you're receiving binary objects of data into your device via wireless service or maybe ethernet or whatever service that you're using this buffer is storing those objects and those objects are being processed and as objects are being processed they are being removed from the buffer as i said it like i don't know what this means but i'm going to take a guess based on the basis of what your what this word states so he said that this is absolutely correct this is exactly what it means and i'm very happy that you did not know but you took a guess and uh, you answered correctly so i said thank you very much so this is thing um one thing that i take from this uh, as a lesson is that it's not important to know 100% it's not possible that one human can know 100% of everything like we try our best we try our best to study algorithms and data structures and dbms and every other thing that exists out there and we try our best to retain as much as we can but i don't think it's possible to retain 100% of everything that we have ever encountered so it, it, be honest in your interviews if somebody asks you a question and you don't know it instead of trying to guess and trying to hit it they, they will also understand that this other person does not know it just be honest and say i don't know this but i think that this is what this means so i don't think that will be negative viewed negatively that one person doesn't know everything in my opinion i could be wrong all right and towards the end i was asked whether i knew what object database models are so how do we use sql database models inside uh programming languages like java python etc and object relational mapping what are orms so i was able to answer this correctly that and he also asked me whether if we have an object in a programming language what exactly does that object represent does that represent the entire table or just a tuple of the table so i said that one tuple of the table represents one object and the structure of the table represents a class of that object so i think he was satisfied with the answer and it went very well so i think towards the end of the interview it was sort of final that i got the job so he is like he did not come out openly say it, that yes you have been selected the official list did come afterwards but it was sort of understood when towards the end of the interview that i have been selected so he asked me okay so this is our where our office is our office is in gurgaon so gurgaon is like on the outskirts of delhi i i live in delhi so i have to like commute one hour and he said yeah these are the metro stations you can come by metro and if you have any questions so about us so i did ask him about uh, what programming languages do they use what is the tech stack that they use so he answered that the tech stack that they use is um, they're using php but they're trying to migrate out of php as quickly as i can and they're also using uh, ruby so php and ruby i don't know any php so i don't have any comments on that whether i like it whether i don't like it 
Ruby I have used a little bit in the past. I'm not very fond of Ruby. I don't want to use the word hate, but I'm not very fond of Ruby. So I was like, yes, legacy language P3 and Ruby, my two favorite things. Excellent. So he, he was also laughing a little. He said, yeah, we are trying to migrate out of it. And yeah, they currently have a monolithic structure. Yeah, so I, I did ask him about the tech stack, about programming languages. I also asked him that um, I've currently put on a little weight. Do you have a gym at the office? He said, no, we don't have a gym, but we have like a cult fit downstairs. So maybe you can try that. I said, okay, fine. So overall, uh, it went well towards the end. I think we both understood that I have been hired. And that was it. My interview, my first interview lasted about 20, 25 minutes. And the second interview with the CTO of Zomato lasted about one hour. Yeah, and uh, I got the results in like two, three days. We all got the results in two, three days. Uh, the batch of DTU, who all has been selected or not. And nine students from DTU were selected. The initial package offered to every student was same, but uh, after working as an intern at Zomato for one, two weeks, my package individually was increased. And that is a story for another time, my experience as an intern at Zomato. And maybe we'll discuss that in another video. Thank you very much for seeing me. I hope that this helps you in your interview process at Zomato or any other company. Thank you very much. Bye.